Austin and I have been playing the new DLC that just dropped for Ghost of Tsushima, which is called Legends. Ghost of Tsushima Legends is their new free DLC that Sucker Punch dropped. And I was... And basically what it is, is it's a additional add-on mode that adds co-op to the game in which uh, there is this, this storyteller character that you can go visit who is telling the stories of the Japanese mythology of uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And in it, it's very, very dark, very kind of spooky and creepy. And there's there's three different modes to it. So there is a story mode that allows you and one other friend, so it's a two-player mode, to play through a story campaign. There's nine missions with three chapters each. So there's about, I think, I think it's 27 missions. And in that, it gets progressively more challenging and introduces you to different types of weird, strange mythology in the Japanese culture and uh, within the Ghost of Tsushima world and realm. So you have this similar move sets, but you are limited. You're not playing your Jin character. You're playing one of four classes, which you can choose from a samurai, a hunter, an assassin, and a ronin, which is basically like a healer support kind of character. And the main differences between those four characters is their class ability and their kind of more or less ultimate ability that they have. So those are the two things that you have that differentiate yourself from each other. And uh, we'll talk more about how that plays into the whole experience later on. Um, Beyond the story campaign, they also have a four-player survival mode, which is four maps that are capture points. And then once you capture the points, you have to defend off 15 waves of enemies. And there is this is basically like a horde mode if you played any of the other games. Like I think Gears had horde mode. Didn't Halo have horde mode, Austin? Yeah, they have Firefight, which is horde mode. Firefight, yeah. So um, with that one, you're playing those same four characters. We have up to four players in this and matchmaking, and you can fight off these waves of enemies. And as you level up and progress through it, you get um, points that you can use to spend on things that help the ability. So you can get something that you can trigger a button that will heal your whole team. Or you can summon dogs, you can summon bears, or um, all these different things. And the last thing they have is a, a raid, which isn't unlocked yet. But when it's available, there will be a three-chapter raid that you can play with four players that has a lot of puzzle aspects and things of that nature that'll be very, very complicated, probably, and very, very interesting. So that's kind of the setup of what we have. Additionally, they also have some new stuff that came to the regular game, like New Game Plus, and the ability to make custom loadouts for your armor. So I played with that a little bit. That was really cool. But I'm going to stop talking and pass over to Austin to talk about um, your first experiences into Legends and what you thought about this new free DLC that we got. Oh, finally. Gosh. Thank you for stopping <laughs> talking. No, I think it, it's amazing. It's exactly what I wanted or didn't even know I wanted. You know, you get to choose these classic characters and they're set up very well. You know, obviously it plays like Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and... I think the way that they went about it with the gear and how that modifies the gameplay and the waves of characters and how they get harder and, you know, they have throw in boss waves every so often. So trying to plan for, or those tactics of figuring out, you know, what classes you actually need, which you probably need one of each at the very least and dividing up the team to go to certain points to take out points or to, to defend the, these points and then using those points that you get for completing waves to buy the the uh, you know the little upgrades for healing or you know extra backup with the animal spirit animals and stuff like that and you know traversing the map was all very interesting and as we got farther into it man I was like this is awesome like it all starts to make sense obviously we were not successful <laughs> you know the whole time but for the most part like every time we played we got better and better we got better and better gear you know we're able to unlock certain things or add certain moves to our our stances to our combat and you know that working together is you know something I, I love and you know that that's what we're kind of hoping from these uh games as a service games and it's just kind of crazy that they were able to add that to this game in a way it's just it's a mini it's not even games as a service but i mean these types of experiences are what we kind of expect from games as a service yeah i was reading an article on forbes that said that they would call this a looter light which i think is a good kind of phrase for this is it's like it's like a looter shooter or looter 
game, mm-hmm. but yeah. it's a light oh, yeah. form of it. So it doesn't have all the bells and whistles in it, but it does have stuff where, you know, there's there's a way more than I expected set of unlockables in this game because you oh, have yeah. you have a whole suite of gear and with a gear score that you can unlock and upgrade. So like as you're progressing through, you have your main weapon, you have your range weapon, you have your your charm ability, and then you have two ghost weapons. And those, as you're playing through the game, you'll unlock higher tiered uh, abilities that go from everything from common to rare to ultra, or no, to common to uncommon to rare to epic. And there's probably legendary in here. But I was, I, I didn't expect that. I had no idea that there was like an actual like gear system to this DLC when it came out. Mm-hmm. And then all the, uh, the cosmetics, they have a bunch of cosmetics that are in here. A lot of them are inspired by, um, like the uh, single player. So like some of the stuff that was in single player, if you've already unlocked in single player, it carries over here. But then there's also a bunch of stuff like masks and there's even emotes. And then there is, um, you know, uh, these, these animations around your sword. So when you're swinging your sword, the particle effects that they made such a prominent part of sucker of, uh, the first person game, single player game, um, those particle effects apply to your sword. So when you unsheath your sword and pull it out, like you can have like, freaking like white lilies come out of the the sword as you're swinging it around and stuff like that which is crazy and that stuff is all unlocked through like basically achievements that they have in the game so doing x number times of this thing will unlock your new cosmetics all of it is done through progression which is i mean there's a lot of replayability to this setup that they have here i was absolutely shocked yeah same here um i'm i I just it just kind of sucks that there's actually not more of this content you know the what you said there's nine missions in the uh, yeah, multiplayer like, I think, yeah. co-op, so only two people can play that, and you know that seems like it's a decent amount of time. And then you know there's only four matches or four maps for the uh, this kind of horde mode, which is really awesome. But yeah, it, there's definitely a lot to be desired, and I'm afraid that they're actually not going to add more to it, or they might add like a little more, but I don't see them. Continue, like put adding more onto this mode because I mean that's not what this game's about sadly. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was just meant to be kind of an add-on. Just a it's not like your forever game or whatever. It's just going to be yeah. a a thing that you play and who knows you may play for a month, you may play it for a couple months or you may jump into it here and there and play through it. But it does give you that ability to where because, I mean, if they end up not ever adding more stuff to it, like I don't ever feel like, oh crap, I can't come back to it three months from now and pick yeah. it back up and you know have fun slicing and dice with my friends and not feel like I'm severely underpowered. Um, yeah. But they, they do have a pretty good amount of like replayability that they have built into the system where you, know, you have, um, when we're playing survival mode with our friends, uh, you start out, you're low level right off the bat. So I feel like they intended you to play through the story first with another friend. And then once you yeah. play through the story, then you're high enough level to enter into the first uh, survival mode, which is bronze level tier. And the recommended, I think they call it Kunai or something like that. That was the power, so something of that nature. But it's basically a power level. Um, the recommended level was 15 is what I found out it ended up being. So once we got past 15 and on into like 20 and 30 or whatever, then it started being something that was recommended. Then now that we've unlocked... Uh, um, the first tier enough and we've played through it it's unlocked the silver tier which that recommended level is 50 so you need to be up to 50 in order to play through that and then there's another tier beyond that so that must be there must be 100 levels in this game I would imagine which is kind of crazy to think about that you can go up to 100 power level I'm assuming yeah. Um, yeah. and then each character has a 20 level rank system so you can go up to 20 levels to unlock things and you know, as you're unlocking abilities, not only unlocking gear, but you're unlocking points that'll allow you to um, enhance. There's techniques that you can enhance your character's abilities. So just like in the single player, there's a whole list of techniques and trees and stuff like that. There's a much more condensed version of techniques specific to your class that enhance your class's character abilities. So right now, everybody has one class ability, but once you reach rank 10 with your character you unlock a second class ability that you can then decide which one you want to use. And um, that's that was just, again, like more stuff in here that just did not expect to see in a free DLC add-on. Like this is my, I mean, this, this honestly, this game is definitely at the top tier of my game of the year, like pick, like at oh, this yeah. point. 
Um, I mean, The Last of Us Part Two was fun, but people I feel like way over hyped that and way got way too excited about it just because it emotionally impacted them. Of course, yeah. I haven't gone all through all the stuff that was like really hit home, but like as far as like a game goes, like you need to think about more than just is the story good. And in Ghost of Tsushima, it has a fantastic story, a fantastic open world, fantastic game mechanics, great characters, great visuals, and then free DLC to boot that's fantastic. Like, yep. what happened? How did they do this? I, I don't know. They're putting they're putting to shame a lot of companies right now, especially AAA companies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for PlayStation to have the this company makes them in my opinion very appealing and you know i'm happy to be with them like they didn't have to do this you know this might have been more money than it was worth but in the end they're adding that experience which adds more value to that game and for playstation yeah yeah um the uh the the thing that really kind of captured me a lot is that you can tell that the areas that we're going through are places we've already been to in the regular game. Like these aren't like brand new maps or specific to this area, except for, I think that snow one might be unique. I don't remember that snow one being anywhere in the game, but I haven't been to the third part of the act yet of the story. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. But I know that all those other ones felt like some place I've been to before, but mm-hmm. the, the style, like, I mean, they're so good at color and style, like uh, visuals that, it just blows my mind. Like just walking through these, you have these like portal things that you have to go through as you progress from story mission to story mission. And the, the visual effects that happen there, or like when you're walking through a mission, I mean, there's like freaking bleeding hearts that are like floating in the air. I mean, this is some like Alan Wake stuff. It's really, really trippy and just so dark and creepy and weird, but it's such a cool thing for a game that otherwise is so bright and colorful in most right. cases, unless you become more of a darker good. But this is like that darker side of the ghost. This is where your ghost really, truly comes out. And I find that to be really uh, just such a cool contrast. Yeah. Um, I agree, man. Uh, I just I just want more. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, you're getting bored already. Like, we kind of covered everything. Like, there's no... I mean, I, I compare it to Marvel's Avengers because, you know, we mentioned in the last podcast that we wanted something like Ghost of Tsushima where we had this awesome story and then, you know, maybe a hundred extra hours tacked on in the end just to like grind your gear level up, which I think is totally doable. And for them to implement that into this, I felt like it's just kind of, it, it's weighed on both sides, uh, you know, against us. You know, I, I love it. Like this is great content, but yeah. yeah, it's definitely like they do a second one, which I don't think they would. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the story, haven't beat either, so maybe it leave, leaves uh, a number two to be made, but, you know, have something like this would be really cool going forward. You mean maybe, like maybe whenever they Ghost of Tsushima 2 comes out, like having this? Yeah, or, like if they added this more into the game, if the, if there was a second one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I like the way that, because I'm curious, you know, had they, say they launched a game with this single player and then this multiplayer, um, Looking at Avengers, I mean, look how much that like kind of fell apart. Where multiplayer or single player was for me really, really good and very polished and well designed, which was shocking mm-hmm. for us, knowing that this was going to be ultimately a live service game. But yeah. then the live service had a slew of problems. But if you look at this one, it's like they launched it with a really, really polished single player experience that was mm-hmm. very extensive, and then oh, yeah. added on this like light multiplayer after the fact and i think it's just a great way for them to bring people back into it and also make for a really cool exciting entry point for people to get the ps5 because this is going to look amazing on ps5 and they already said when it launches it's going to run 60 frames per second which i it's already smooth with what it is now which i guess it's running 30 but it seems like it's i mean the way it runs is just really really good for how Mm. visually appealing this game is um but yeah I've, i've really enjoyed it but i think like you said, like I said this off camera earlier, but I am like we played we played a lot last night. I mean, we played the four player campaign. We probably played four or five hours of this, and um, after like we had played through all the maps, we had beat the level fifteen. Um, we had beat the fifteen uh, uh, tiers or like waves, I guess. 
um, after we had been that three or four times, I was like, okay, I've kind of been here, done that, and it's getting a little repetitive. Yeah. But I still love yeah. the upgrades and the unlockables and stuff like that that are in the game. So I'm curious to see if they do anything to kind of add some additional spice, like maybe another map or you know, some different, like they do have the modifiers, which makes it kind of interesting. So every time like a new mm-hmm. boss comes out, like there's a special modifier to them that you have to kind of think about and plan yeah, for. Bosses are no joke. <laughs> yeah, bosses are definitely no joke. But for, I mean, for me, I, I, I was hoping that they would, sorry not to cut you off. No, you're good. Okay. What I was hoping is that they would um, have these mm-hmm. levels because there's so much in Ghost of Tsushima. I don't think it'd be too hard to have it where like, you know, the first set of waves is in one location mm-hmm. and then like it progresses forward. Almost like a tiered, like you start the low one, and like you know, you go to the second part, of, you know, and keep like going up. A, and like it's a different area, like a rush mode or objectives. whatever in yeah. Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Where that would like, actually so be kind of like, cool. It's not just the same location. Yeah, like a push. Which, and pull. I mean, it helps technically because you you get used to the location and you know how to traverse it and stuff like that. But I think yeah. having different things like that would be interesting. Yeah. But I mean, maybe that's too much to ask. We're gamers; we can play yeah. about everything. And that, well, I mean, that's that's the thing with this. It's like you know, this is it's hard to quantify. Like, like we have these expectations about oh, it could be this or it could do more of this. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like this was this was free additional content to a game that already had enough content to more than warrant a sixty dollars price tag. And oh, then, yeah. you know, to add this on, it's just like we have all these ideas of like, oh, man, what if, what if that, what if this? Because <laughs> it is so good what they have here. And it's yeah. like, damn, like, what if they do expand upon this? And like, what all, I mean, there is a lot of potential here. Because, I mean, right. this, is some, this is why I'm excited about Godfall later on this year. Because we don't have like a really good looter shooter that's melee focused, like melee combat focused. Right. Um, right. I mean, I guess there's... Is Warframe me- melee focused? Do they have like a lot of melee combat in yeah, there? Yeah, there's a lot of melee in there. Yeah. I think it's mostly melee. I don't know. I just don't but think Warframe, Warframe so is old. like. Yeah, that's kind of my thought with it. It was but, made in different time. Well, maybe the new, you know, expansions or DLCs or stuff are a little more. You know, they've definitely more updated current. it a lot. But right, right, it's just a game that I've never wanted to expose myself to. I agree. Yeah, I played it a few times, but it wasn't anything to really kept me in. Yeah, no, everyone's like Warframe, Warframe, Warframe. Right. <laughs> But um, but yeah, no, I'm excited to finish the story of the legends, and then obviously finish the story of the main game, <laughs> and actually be good Shishima. Yeah. But it's cool that it's got us back into it more. And um, I mean, it's it's great. Like, there's there's nothing like if you haven't bought Ghost of Shishima yet, there's literally no reason you shouldn't buy this game because right. I think it's it's approachable for everybody. It is. Um, it's super fun. It's not super intimidating like Dark Souls or anything like that, but the world is beautiful. The gameplay is a blast. Um, just, I mean, I really don't have anything bad to say about this game at all. I mean, there's, there's, yeah. if there is any bad things, it's just like, okay, the dialogue can be kind of silly sometimes, but that's fine. But I mean, this is the most polished game I've ever played. I think, literally ever. 